everybody. These are certainly unprecedented times that we are all going through. And I am delighted, although not live in North Carolina as I had planned, but to at least be with all of you in what is today's new norm, uh, directly from New York. Not New York City. Right now, this is the closest I get to my office in New York City. But I am thrilled to be with all of you. The title for today is Secrets, Tips, and Techniques of the Confident Speaker. But not everyone is born a confident speaker. I myself had a very challenging start. I didn't speak until I was three. And in today's day, that's close to a crisis. In those days, I just had a very concerned grandmother who drove my mother crazy. But I also had an older sister. So for all of those looking forward to daycare, you know what it's like to have children. And my sister was precocious. So if she was hungry, I got something to eat. And if she was thirsty, I got something to drink. So I really didn't need to talk. And then one day, I started to talk and it was all natural. I assumed my sister had a play date and I was hungry or thirsty. But then I went through my formative years completely introverted. I was that person, so sad for me to think about, walking through the halls of high school with my eyes down, not looking at people. Now I look at everybody, I smile at everybody. But in those days, I was so painfully shy that I couldn't even look up and smile at people. So my, my reason for sharing this story is that not everyone's born a dynamic communicator, but everyone, when given the tools, can become a dynamic communicator. And we will learn some of those secrets today. It brings me to what the next few hours will be about. By the end of this presentation, you will have the increased awareness. I always like to emphasize awareness. I'm thrilled when I hear from people after a presentation about the change they made. They got rid of their filler words. They developed a stronger, more confident voice. I'm always so shocked that people really make the change after just one hour, two hours, or three hours. But more often, people need the weekly training to make these changes. So that's why I say you will have the increased awareness. My goal for you is to have increased awareness by the end of today. Increased awareness to develop a confident speaking voice. Increased awareness to be able to deliver your message more strategically. Increased awareness to connect and engage your listeners. And now that's more important than ever on the virtual call. To have a voice that will match your talent, your skill, and your expertise. And last, to be memorable. We have actually a tip sheet that is 10 tips to being more memorable. And that's what it's all about. When you're presenting, again, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, one one-on-three, or one-on-a-thousand, I want you to be memorable. So now you might think you attended a lecture and that's not the idea. So now it's time to begin to use that chat and to engage. What are the benefits of being a strong communicator? And throughout today, I will be interchanging the use of communicator and presenter. Because as you'll see, you can't be a great presenter if you don't have strong communication skills. It's not about what, what do I do with my hands? Where do I stand? It's about having those strong communication skills so you can impact and influence others. 
being a strong communicator will position you as a subject matter expert. Being a strong communicator will increase your ability to network and meet new people. When we go in and we, we network, whether it's virtually, and I don't know about all of you, but I am doing some great networking. Every Friday at 5 p.m., an organization I'm in has a cocktail party and everybody comes with their cocktail and it is some of the best networking. But who is really the one speaking up? The strong communicators. Build your business and your brand. And again, what we're all here for as emerging leaders to move up the corporate ladder. How we say something matters. This too will not be an exhaustive list by any means, but it is a list of some of the areas that we will address some today. The monotone voice. I get calls from people all the time that have monotone voices. We deal a lot with people in finance, data, numbers, you know, IT people, everything's about numbers and, you know, acronyms. And if you are on a call now more than ever, a virtual call, if you are using a monotone voice, you know what will happen. So many people know they have a monotone voice, they just don't know how to change it. So we will talk about that. I already addressed up speak. And if anybody doesn't know or hasn't heard up speak and wants more clarification, just let the chat box know because just the awareness and the recognition is the goal today, not making any changes. A soft voice. I hear, you know, I'm a little sexist only based on my experience. So the monotone voice, I get those concerns and complaints mostly from male clients. Soft voice, I hear so much from females. Again, none of them are mutually exclusive. I get it from everybody just more often. I hear from women, and this is a direct quote that I've heard probably a hundred times. I'll be in a meeting and I'll say something and no one really responds. And then a male colleague says the exact same thing and it's greeted like it's the greatest idea. It goes back to how you say something, building vocal presence. Excessive filler words, no greater than two in two minutes. I want all of you to record yourself in the next 24 hours and see how many you have. And rambling, we're in a, a world of a short attention span just to give you an example of that, I used to post a lot of videos that were seven minutes, nine minutes, and you know, I got a couple of subscribers. In 2018, we started posting a video tip every week that's one minute, just one minute, no greater, because we post them on Instagram, which if it's a video, it can only be one minute. We post it all over social media. When we started the one minute weekly video, I had 225 subscribers on YouTube. Not very impressive. Today, I have 26,000 subscribers. Yes, I think my content is great, but it goes to the point that everyone has a short attention span and everyone can make time for one minute. So when you need to say something, you get in, you say it, you get out. If people want to know more, they will ask questions. On a scale from one to three, think about the volume of your speech. When you gave your one word, there are some who are definitely a three. Some of you who even make me sound like I have a soft voice. And then there are others that I did make note that could use some vocal power. Hopefully you know who you are. So rate yourself on a scale from one to three. The clarity of your speech. 
are you clear and articulate or do you fall into what I call the abyss? And you know who you are. We've all heard people where as they get to the end of their sentence, they just drop off into an abyss and that last message is lost. Maybe it's just the end of your word and then the message is lost because we don't know what the intention was. So think about your clarity of speech. I call it the rate of delivery here, but it's really about the strategic delivery of your message. Are you speaking quickly? Now, I love when I speak down south because we New Yorkers all speak quickly. So when I talk about the rate of delivery and I ask for feedback, everybody's like, I'm a fast talker. But I think down south, it's a little different. We might have less people that speak quickly. But as I said in my opening slide, when we get nervous and we're presenting senior management, CEO, large groups, when we get nervous, we tend to speak up faster. Is that you? What does your body say about you? We'll talk about that later. And now more on the virtual call. That is to me so interesting how the shift has changed. And your overall communication style. I kind of, I, I lump everything together here. Do you find yourself rambling, using too many filler words, up speak? I want you to give yourself a, the highest would be 15. I want you to be honest with yourself. I'm going to pause for a minute so you can do this and shoot to the chat box what your total number is. If you enjoyed part one of Secrets, Tips, and Techniques of the Confident Speaker, then you may want to click on part two. Be on the lookout. It is definitely in our channel. And once you click on it, you will access part two of Secrets, Tips, and Techniques of the Confident Speaker. I look forward to seeing you there.